All right. Hi. So today I'm going to talk about uh, adopting existing resources uh, into Pulumi. So there's two things we could be talking about uh, when we talk about sort of existing resources uh, with Pulumi. And so the first is that we have existing resources that we want to reference from the Pulumi program, uh, and we want to use the, those uh, details of those resources to create new resources. So for example, maybe I have an existing VPC and I want to go and get that VPC and then use that VPC as an input to uh, other resources uh, that I deploy in my application. But I don't yet want to sort of manage the life cycle of that VPC itself with my Pulumi program. I just want to reference it. And that's a scenario that's been supported for a while in Pulumi uh, using uh, the notion of dot .get uh, and get uh, helper methods. Uh, and so that one is well supported, lots of use cases of that that you can look at online. Uh, the example I want to talk about today is the one where we want to actually go and uh, adopt that resources into uh, Pulumi and make it be managed now by Pulumi. And in that case, we've got an existing resource and we want to say, now I want to have its desired state be defined by my Pulumi program. And the updates I make to my Pulumi program, I'm going to update that existing resource instead of deploying a new resource. Uh, and this is great for when you have some existing infrastructure, you want to take, uh, take it and start managing it uh, with Pulumi. That's the scenario we're really going to focus on. Uh, today. And so the example I'm going to go through today, uh, I'm going to focus on uh, A, I'm going to use um, uh, Terraform as the way of deploying my infrastructure. Uh, there's nothing special about Terraform here. We could be using, you know, I could have point and clicked to create my resources in the Azure console. I could have gone and used CloudFormation in AWS. Uh, however, I created my resources, uh, the Pulumi uh, adoption features work exactly the same. I'm also going to highlight Azure here, but of course, Pulumi supports a variety of different cloud providers, AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes. Uh, Cloudflare, et cetera. And all, all the features I'm going to talk about today work exactly the same, no matter which of those uh, I'm working with. And finally, I'm going to use TypeScript for this example, but Pulumi supports uh, uh, Python as well, and all the same features uh, are available uh, in Python. Um, so with that, let's kind of go ahead and get started. And the first step we're going to need is we're going to need some existing uh, kind of resources in my cloud provider. And to do that, I'm going to deploy something with Terraform, uh, just to give me uh, an example to work with here. And so I'll touch uh, main.tf, open that up. Paste that in, and uh, just run Terraform init to make sure I have the right providers, and then Terraform apply. And this will go ahead and uh, create these resources. And if you look at this, this is a simple example of um, kind of an Azure uh, uh, an Azure virtual machine, but it has to create five or so resources. It has to use a variable, some resource groups, a network interface, uh, and then a finally a virtual machine. And so we'll give it a, a little while to create that. It'll take about a minute. And while it's creating it, um, let's go ahead and uh, start a fresh console uh, and start showing how we can sort of adopt and, and, and import this uh, into a Pulumi program. So the first piece is we need a Pulumi program uh, that kind of describes uh, what our infrastructure is. And so let me just start by saying Pulumi new Azure TypeScript dash dash force. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and accept the defaults to sort of get a new uh, to get a new uh, environment where we can create our Pulumi program. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to have a Pulumi program that describes the same infrastructure. Um, and so to do that, uh, we could write down, you know, if we point and clicked in our console and had never written down what the desired state of our infrastructure was, we would probably have to write that program from scratch. Um, but for some other sources of, of my um, my desired state, I can actually import that uh, and bring that over into Pulumi. So in particular, we have a tool called tf to Pulumi, which will in, uh, turn my, my, uh, my .tf files into uh, .ts files that I can use with Pulumi. And so uh, I can take that main.tf file that I just wrote, and I can just say I want a uh, tf to Pulumi to convert it into a ts file. If I now open that ts file up, uh, you see that this is the exact same uh, contents as what I just pasted in there. Um, so I just created a, uh, a uh, Pulumi program that describes the same infrastructure. Um, and so that's a great tool. That tool has been around for a little while, but this is a useful tool for sort of bootstrapping uh, my import. So now I can go ahead and say Pulumi up uh, to go and deploy this. Uh, and as usual, um, Pulumi up will preview uh, before it does the deployment. And so we'll see in this particular case that that preview says it's going to create all these resources. And that's what you'd normally expect from a Pulumi program. Uh, since we haven't deployed this particular program before, we're going to have to create new resources uh, to manage. Now, in this particular case, what we want is not to create new resources. We actually want to go and say, hey, there are existing resources. I want you to adopt those into the, the management here. So we want to import instead of, uh, instead of create. And so this is the new feature that we've recently added uh, into Pulumi, which is that I can now say uh, import colon. And now I can provide an ID here, which is the ID of the resource under management in Azure Cloud uh, that I want to, to map in here. 
And so what I need to do is I need to go and find the IDs uh, for these resources. And so for example, I have, uh, I have a TF state file here, which is what I just deployed. And for example, the resource group uh, we see here is a resource group uh, ID. Uh, so this is the ID of our resource group. So I can go ahead and take that. And actually, let me just split the screen so I can more easily do this uh, going forward. Uh, so I can go ahead and take that, put that ID in there. And for now, I'm just going to comment out the rest of this just so we can see uh, what this process looks like. So now if I do Pulumi up, uh, we should see that instead of creating this new resource, uh, Pulumi is going to understand it's going to try and import this. And it'll, in fact, tell me that it's going to import it successfully. I can see the details. And I can see exactly what uh, name and location it's going to sort of import um, that match what I wrote. Now, before I go ahead and do that, let me just show you one example of what might happen if, for instance, I've been writing this manually and I've gotten something wrong. Like maybe I mistyped the name of the resource. So I was trying to import it with a different name than it actually had, which is something that shouldn't be allowed to happen because that name is a fixed part of the resource identity uh, in Azure. So if in this case I ran Pulumi up, uh, what we would see is that uh, when I do the import, I'll actually get a warning uh, telling me that there's a diff between what I described and what the cloud provider had uh, at, the, at that ID. And so it in fact tells me that the name is different. And it says uh, that imports to import do not match. Uh, importing this resource will fail. And so if I tried to go ahead and continue with this, it would actually fail. And we can see here the details of what was different. It should have been resources, but I was trying to change it to resource. So this is a helpful thing that Pulumi does to ensure that you don't accidentally sort of import things with the wrong uh, description. In that case, if you did that, that might cause uh, you to immediately try to replace them and lead to some very confusing error messages down the line. So if we fix that up and say resources again, uh, this will, as we saw previously, just uh, import correctly. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for all the rest of our resources. So we have a virtual network here. This is the subnet, so let's go ahead and just put that on the subnet. Uh, let's go ahead and find the other virtual network. Got some help tips that are taking up some space. Okay, there's the virtual network. And what else do we need to do? We need to get the NIC network interface. And finally, we need to get the actual virtual machine itself. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so now we should have all these resources. Now if I do Pulumi up, we should see this preview will actually tell me uh, exactly uh, that it's going to import those remaining four resources. Uh, in fact, all five resources because we didn't yet import the resource group. So see there again, it tells me it did them all successfully. There's no warnings, which means I did get all the description of this correct. Uh, that, of course, in this case was done by the TF to Pulumi tool, but had I been doing this manually, I would have gotten that feedback loop along the way. I can see the details of exactly what it's going to import. So I can go ahead and say yes. And this will just go ahead and import those and write them into the state file that I am now managing. At this point, I now have a deployment of this program that is tied to those existing resources, not to a new set of resources. So there's a couple of things I can do with that. So one is I can go look at uh, this in the um, Plumi.com backend and see the sort of history of this stack that I imported these resources. And I can see the resources under management. So for example, that virtual machine that I was looking at, I can click this button, jump over into the Azure portal, um, and see this resource. Now, this is the exact same resource I created originally uh, with, um, with Terraform. Uh, we can see it's been alive you know, for the last six minutes or so uh, since we started this video. Um, here's the tags and everything that I described originally with Terraform, but now I'm sort of managing uh, in this Bulimi program. And then to really show what it means to sort of be managing this, uh, I can go ahead and sort of say add something new. So I can say manage by and say Bulimi. Uh, and so I'm going to make changes to the desired state of my infrastructure, and I can go ahead and apply them. So now I can say pull me up. And here we should see that this is going to update uh, this existing resource uh, with some changes. So it's going to modify the tags. I can see the details of that. It's going to add this manage by Pulumi tag. Um, it's going to do this in place as an update, not as a replacement. And so I can just go ahead and say yes. That'll apply this change to my infrastructure. And I've now like actively managed this infrastructure in a sense uh, with Pulumi. So if I come over here back into the Azure portal, uh, we should see 
uh, that we have an additional tag now. So there we go, the managed by pollutant tag. So we did update our infrastructure uh, now using pollutant. And now I can go ahead and uh, do whatever I want here. I can continue to maintain this here. I could destroy the stack using Pulumi, however I want to uh, maintain this. Now, one last thing you might notice is uh, I kind of left this import statement around. Um, it's actually OK to leave this import statement uh, around as I'm making updates to my resource, uh, because the ID that my resource has is still the same ID. Um, and so uh, if there's an existing resource and has the same ID, uh, Pulumi is not going to complain about that. If I did something which caused this resource to be replaced, I would need to remove this import because it would no longer be accurate uh, because the ID of the resource would now be the new ID of the replaced, uh, of the replaced resource. Um, but it's also safe to just remove this after I've done this process. And so I can go ahead and uh, just remove all of these um, now, and that should be fine. The other thing to note is uh, for each of these imports, you know, you may not want to encode the, uh, the specific, you know, if you have multiple instances of this, uh, of this application, like you have a dev environment, a stage environment, you may not want to encode the dev IDs for all these resources right in your code. So the other thing you can do uh, is use sort of config. Um, so you can access Pulumi config and say, you know, Pulumi uh, config dot uh, require, you know, main resource group name or something, right? right main resource group ID. Um, so you could use this uh, to then uh, have this all indirect through configuration. Uh, so now you can, inside your uh, config bag, specify in your dev stack, here are the IDs I want to uh, import from, and in your staging stack, uh, specify the IDs you want to import from there. And I won't go through that whole process here, but just to give you a sense that it is possible to sort of avoid encoding these things in here if you want. And by putting this in code, we give you a lot of different options for how you uh, configure these things, how you chain the imports into your existing applications. But in this particular case, since I've done the import correctly, um, I'm just going to say Plumi up now uh, with all of my uh, imports removed. And this should have no changes uh, because I'm not actually changing anything in my infrastructure. I'm just removing those so that my code is clean. Um, so I go and say yes, uh, make this change, which has no impact. OK, so there we have. We've successfully sort of uh, imported uh, resources into uh, Pulumi from uh, existing resources deployed with some other system. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this process can work with you know, Terraform CloudFormation or anything created manually within your console. However you've deployed your resources, you can adopt them into Pulumi. You can also work with resources in AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, Kubernetes, and any other cloud provider that Pulumi supports. And finally, if you're working with Python instead, it's exactly the same process, uh, just adding these resource options to specify an ID to import. Great. Thank you for joining us. Bye.